Positive thinking works wonders. And it does too. That is for sure. Whatever your life is this morning, unsatisfactory, unhappy, defeated, perhaps, I want to tell you, it doesn't need to remain that way. That was Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, the 1950s minister and self-help guru who famously wrote The Power of Positive Thinking. Peel's message of relentless optimism, mantras like, you need be defeated only if you are willing to be, and his positive mindset prosperity gospel gained him a lot of fans, including Fred Trump, Donald Trump's father. So much so that he and his family joined Peel's church, as his granddaughter, Donald's niece, Mary Trump, told us in 2020. And as far as I recollect, my grandfather joined Margaret Collegial Church, Collegiate Church, which was uh, Norman Vincent Peel's church the guy who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking in the early 50s, mid 50s. Um, so, you know, I never got the impression that any of them, with the exception of Marianne, who converted to Catholicism uh, before her first marriage, was particularly religious or churchgoing. That Donald Trump was never particularly religious or churchgoing is news to absolutely no one. But now, Trump is using his own brand of positive thinking and prosperity gospel to dupe his self-proclaimed Christian supporters into believing that he is the second coming of Jesus himself, his own brand of the power of MAGA thinking, fusing his own perverse messianic message into his rallies, which alongside the passion of the MAGA faithful, gives them a church of the cult of Trump air, including the rituals that would seem familiar to Christian believers, hands raised in the air as a sign of surrender, and reverence to God. Except that Trump rallies, it's reverence to Trump, with a one-finger salute, a hallmark of QAnon followers, and a nod to that movement's slogan. Even though they were told to stop, you still see them from time to time. He's also taken to ending his speeches with a sermon of sorts, proclaiming that they are one movement and one family under God. But now that he's running for president so that he can stay out of prison, He's really ratcheted up the church-like energy at his rallies. As the New York Times notes, even more than in his past campaigns, he is framing his 2024 bid as a fight for Christianity, telling a convention of Christian broadcasters that just like in the battles of the past, we still need the hand of our Lord. On his social media platform in recent months, Trump has shared a courtroom-style sketch of himself sitting next to Jesus and a video that repeatedly proclaims, God gave us Trump to lead the country. And the reality is that his venomous snake oil is working. As Trump has either directly or indirectly compared himself to Jesus, his followers have continued their descent into cult-like madness, parroting his persecution complex right back as if he is being punished for their sins. Because I'm being indicted for you and never forget. When they are indicting him, we are being indicted. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. It's really to get him out of being able to run for president. That, that's all it is. It's to take our eyes off of wanting him. Our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They're trying to persecute him for the same things that they have been doing all along. They're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. Okay, he's doing this for us as a country to make the changes we need to make. And he's the target where we don't have to be. Joining me now is Stephen Hassan, founder of the Freedom of Mind Resource Center and the author of The Cult of Trump. Uh, Stephen, it is good to see you. Um, Talk to me about how that happens, what we just saw there. How do people go from ordinary people to believing that someone like Donald Trump, of all people, a, a, a giant, enormous sinner, is not just speaking for God, but is, in a sense, God? 
Yeah, it's a pleasure to be on your show again, Joy. As you know, I was recruited into the Moonies, so it happened to me, mm -hmm. and I got radicalized, and I believe this fat Korean billionaire was the Messiah and greater than Jesus, and I thought that democracy was satanic. We had to infiltrate the government and install a theocracy. And after my deprogramming in 1976, I wanted to understand brainwashing and mind control, so I immersed myself myself in social psychology, learned about hypnosis, and have been doing my life work of 47 years to explain to the public how intelligent, educated people's minds can get hacked, not unlike how computers can get hacked mm -hmm. through malware, where you deceptively click on something and hypnotically get indoctrinated into this alternate reality. However, the good news is it's not permanent and people wake up and they are embarrassed and ashamed as I felt in 1976. But more and more people are leaving the MAGA cult. And I do think that it's important that people not just yell at people who are still trapped in this delusion or block their family and friends who they've loved, but open doors and just say, no matter what, I love you. You're my aunt, my uncle, my, my sister, my brother, and ask questions in a respectful, curious way that gets them to start realizing they've been conned and that their minds have been hijacked. Right, and I think that people don't want to believe they've been conned. Look, my, my mother came from Guyana, and she used to have to correct people that Jonestown was made up by Americans in a cult. Not It, it was not a, a real city in Guyana. But whether it's Jim Jones or David Koresh or even Charles Manson, as you said, like intelligent religious people who had true religious uh, fervor joined them, believing that they were going to be led to Jesus or to Christ, only for these men to say, oh, no, by the way, I'm the Lord and Savior. Trump has reached that point where he's done that pivot from saying that he's leading a movement of believers to saying that the, the belief should be in him, that he is the Messiah. Once you get to that point where you're now accepting that reality, how do you walk someone back? It, is it just loving kindness and questions? There, it seems to me it can't be that simple. No, it, it's more. But I, I want to just uh, challenge the idea that Trump is a genius in doing oh, this I all himself. All. Yeah, agree with that. Mark Burnett, who recruited him for The Apprentice, mm -hmm. is part of the Christian Dominionism movement that wants to s destroy the separation of church and state. All the white introduced him to New Apostolic Reformation members and other priests who have some 40 million Americans who are following people who claim to be apostles or, G or, or prophets themselves, Joy, that say God told them that Trump won in 2020, therefore ignore all the evidence because this is Satan and it's fake news, right? But there are, there are puppet masters, including, I believe, Vladimir Putin, uh, but also Christian nationalists, Nazis, and other people with agendas to push fossil fuel oils, et cetera, that are manipulating these true believers. But to answer your question, the critical thing is explaining the influence continuum from, from ethical to unethical influence, and that ethical influence is informed consent respecting conscience and mind control authoritarian cultism creates this uh, a dissociative disorder where people are dependent and obedient. They become clones of the cult member. The critical thing with MAGA people is I recommend people talk about Chinese communist brainwashing and these methods and pimps and traffickers because they all use behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control to create this new pseudo identity. And by talking about a group they agree is a brainwashing group, we can back backtrack yeah. and ask people to think back before they started believing in what Trump. What did they actually believe? Yeah. Including you, what did they believe it. about about God and what did they believe and what did they read actually in the red letters of the Bible? Uh, Stephen Haas and I, um, we are out of time, but thank you very much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap 
app on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.